kids don't seem to like certain vegetables, but they all are hardwired to like sweet tastes. And yet you could also imagine that one of the reasons why they may eventually grow to incorporate vegetables is because of some knowledge that vegetables might be good for you, better for them. So is there a change in the receptors, the distribution, the number, the sensitivity, et cetera, that mm -hmm. can explain the transition from uh, wanting to avoid vegetables to being willing to eat vegetables simply in childhood yes. to, to early so, development? So I, I'm going to take the question slightly differently, but I think it will illustrate the point. And, and I'm going to just Illust it, it, it use the difference between the olfactory system and the taste system to make the point. Taste system, five basic palates. Sweet, sour, bitter, salt, and umami. Each of them has a predetermined identity. We know exactly what, to, and valence. These are attractive, these are aversive. In the olfactory system, it's claimed that we can smell millions of different odors. Yet, for the most part, none of them have an innate predetermined meaning. In the olfactory system, meaning is imposed by learning and experience. Even the smell of smoke? So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna make it differently. There are a handful of the millions of others that were claimed that, that you could immediately tell me these are aversive and these are attractive. Vomit. So vomit, it's not correct because I can assure you that there are cultures and societies where things which are far less appealing than vomit do not evoke an aversive reaction. Really? Really. Sulfur would be maybe a universal. I'm not talking pheromones, okay? Yes. Pheromones are in a different category that trigger innate responses. But nearly every other is afforded meaning by learning and experience. And that's why you like broccoli, mm -hmm. and I despise broccoli because I remember my mother forcing me to eat broccoli. I'm so sorry. Same sensory experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. This, this accommodates two important things. Yeah, in the case of taste, you have neurons at every station that are for sweet, for sour, for bitter, for salty, and umami only five classes. So it's not going to take a lot of your brain. If we can in fact smell a million others and everyone else of others had to have predetermined meaning, there's not going to be enough brain just to accommodate that one sense. And so evolution in its infinite wisdom <laughs> it evolved a system where you put together a pathway and a cortex, olfactory cortex, yeah? where you have the capacity to associate every other in a specific context that now gives it the meaning. Now, let's go back to the original question then. So, other than clearly plastic, mega plastic, because it's, it's fundamental basis and neural organization, but taste, we just told you that's you know predetermined hardwire. But predetermined hardwire doesn't mean that it's not modulated by learning or experience. It only means that you are born liking sweet and disliking bitter. And we have many examples of plasticity, beer being one example. So why why do we learn to love beer? Is in coffee. It's because it has an associated gain to the system. And that gain to the system, that positive valence that emerges out of that negative signal is sufficient to create that positive association. And in the case of beer, of course, is alcohol. The feeling good that we get after is more than sufficient to say, I want to have more of this. And in the case of coffee, of course, is caffeine activating a whole group of neurotransmitter systems that give you that, that, that high associated with coffee. So yes, this taste system is changeable, it's malleable, and it's subjected to learning and experience. But unlike the olfactory system, it's restricted yeah, in what you could do with it because its goal is to allow you to get nutrients and survive. The goal of the olfactory system is very different. 
is being used not in our case, but in every animal species, to you know identify friend versus foe, to identify mate, to identify ecological niches they want to be in. So it plays a very broad role that then requires that it be set up, organized, and function in a very different type of context. Taste is about, can we get the nutrients we need to survive? And can we ensure that we are attracted to the ones we need and we are averse to the ones that are going to kill us? <laughs>